Hey, it's Bobby Manning, and welcome to number 99 of the Bobcast Dome Theory. It's been about a month. We've been following trends politically in the sports world, unwinding after this NBA season that finished in the beginning portion of October. And since we last talked, things have gotten dire. It's been about a year of shows on our program dominated by political, race, consequential discussions of survival in sports, in society. When it comes to COVID-19 and the way that it's changed our world, you can tell yourself anything you want about COVID-19. Whether the flows, understandings, approaches, or comfort in living alongside this virus, for you have swayed, the virus itself doesn't change. And since we've adopted new mindsets, new approaches to living alongside this virus, whether personal, political, or governance-wise, we're back to square one for one reason or another. And you can blame Trump. You can blame your governor. You can blame the idiots alongside you doing different things, but we're in the same place nonetheless. 125,000 cases a day. Feels like we're breaking new records for cases on a daily basis now. We're certainly about 70% above where we were two weeks ago case-wise. And if we compare it to April, ground zero in this fight against this virus, we're up above some of the worst moments of this pandemic when it comes to caseload. Now, if you want to point toward death, it's looking bad there too. 700, case, 700 deaths a day, more or less, if you're keeping an eye on it. I don't like to say this, but as some say, we get a 9-11 every week in this country, and there's a casualness about it. Brings me back to college basketball, which is starting in about two weeks, which is fitting because that, too, is starting where we began back in April. College basketball dragged its feet into its conference tournaments to the point where after the Ivy League had canceled its conference tournament, you still had other conferences rolling after the NBA had canceled its. The Big East was out playing tournament games as other conferences shut down. Rudy Gobert had contracted the virus and states were beginning to seal down their doors. And right till the very last moment, the urge to make that extra dollar dragged on in basketball games that were completely meaningless with players who possibly could have contracted the virus, unavailable tests, and coaches like Fred Hoiberg sweating along the sideline and what turned out to be the flu, but at that very moment could have been the start of a super spreader event. Since then, we've seen the President of the United States contract COVID and almost die We've seen the upper levels of the executive grants in this country contract this virus. We're again starting to see uh, truck-style morgues outside of certain facilities. Those hospitals are starting to fill up again. Now, we might not have had as centralized impact as Boston, as New York went through back at that time, but there's certainly a different approach to what's happening here. Here in Massachusetts... Governor Baker just enacted a new initiative. Gyms are going to close at 9.30 as are bars. It's going to be a cutoff point for these places where the virus could ultimately spread. Now, as I said in the opener, the virus doesn't fall in any hourly allotment. Just because we make ourselves feel better, just because we position ourselves in this economic structure that we're trying to sustain in an unsustainable period with outside factors pressuring against it. The virus is just going to do its thing regardless of how our human emotions, human systems, and human sensibilities react to that. College basketball is going to start going, and it's not like there's a pristine plan in place. There's a uniform testing standard that they're all going by. Essentially, each school is making its own plan, or at least each conference and whoever has power, whoever has money in these circumstances is going to roll. And doesn't that sound familiar? 
right now in this country, big companies like Amazon are thriving at an all-time level, which is why stocks are soaring during an unprecedented time of economic and health catastrophe in this country. So what's college basketball going to look like when you have a program like Duke who's got its preseason tournament, who has its schedule sorted out, who has the money and resources for its testing, and everything it needs to be ready to roll this year. They're going to thrive. It's going to be great. Smaller schools, the Ivy League dropped out today, and we might see schools throughout this season start to drop out of this as we charge towards March Madness. Everybody's asking, why are ratings in sports down? Is it race? Is it protests? Are people cutting cords? One thing I haven't heard a whole lot of is the fact that these sports are just haphazardly throwing together seasons, not promoting themselves all that well, and so on edge in their ability to sustain what they're doing that people aren't buying in. Let's go to baseball, for example, who had the chance to lead the charge. They could have formed bubbles in Arizona or Florida as they had planned to in a similarly productive way that the NBA ultimately did. Dr. Fauci signed off on those plans, but they scrapped them. It was easier to just put teams back in their stadiums when they felt like it, fight over a contract, get their money situation sorted out, and then just throw those bucket of balls out there with no fans in the stands and call it what it is, an MLB season. Despite the fact that we're going to change the extra inning rules, we're going to change the playoff format, and if teams get sick, as the Miami Marlins ultimately did, as the St. Louis Cardinals did, we'll just figure it out. Scrap a couple weeks of their schedule, do some double headers later in the year. We'll have a season. And when we get to the World Series, even if a player's test comes back positive in the eighth inning of the final World Series game, just get it done. Because it's sports, it's what we do. Same goes for this country. Go to work. Celebrate your holidays. Open your restaurant and bars. We can't see the virus. Not everyone can feel it. Not everyone's affected by it. So if you are, you can figure it out. You can go to the hospital. If you don't die, you're all set, right? Even though there are lasting effects cognitively and physiology-wise with this virus that have been widely reported. This isn't a life or death circumstance. There's a quality of life circumstance, especially with all the health factors we have in this country. But you don't see it, you don't feel it across all swaths of the society, and isn't that true with so many different things? Upper classes have largely avoided this virus, while the poor minority groups in this country have bore the brunt of it, laborers especially, essential workers at the top of it all. We've seen nurses, doctors die of this, just as we've seen bus drivers, uh, food workers, and grocery store tellers be the most exposed and the most damaged by this. But in any case, we push forward. So Justin Turner comes out with COVID in the eighth inning of the World Series, isn't taken out of the game, possibly becomes a super spreader in the post-game simulation. And what is it? After all that, it's a joke. There'll be no punishment. He was apologetic, as the commissioner of the sport says. What's this example we set there for the country? Whatever. The NFL has tossed around games. They've had a haphazard season. Will we do 16-game playoffs? Meh. We'll figure it out when we get there. Will we do a playoff bubble? Season's rolling along. We've only had to reschedule a couple of games. One of those games happened to be a New England Patriots game that was rescheduled for the morning of where New England had to fly out, get a police escort up 93, stop morning traffic in Boston, hop on a plane, and play that same night against the Kansas City Chiefs, where they were completely left out to dry, lost that game, brought their quarterback the next week out of urgency, who had contracted COVID-19 and forced to postpone him into that game. And the Patriots have been a complete disaster since. Now, are there compounding reasons for that? Cam Newton certainly can't throw to his right. 
but he also missed a week with COVID. And what other athletes have we seen struggle coming back from COVID? A Jaguars running back landed in the hospital twice with COVID. Russell Westbrook came back to the NBA bubble, looking like a shell of himself after COVID. We even saw a great Miami Heat rookie on their road to the NBA Finals be completely taken out of the rotation and unproductive when he was out there. He had COVID. Now other players have come back and done great. Other players have struggled mightily to come back from this. But the sports keep rolling despite the bumps in the road. The worst could be college football, which had a large swath of players drop out. Teams have had disastrous seasons, including my Syracuse Orange, from a plethora of players not wanting to deal with the mismanaged testing situations, the lack of transparency on the part of the schools that has been widely noted, and they've decided to move on with their careers or look out for the best interests of them and their families because are they getting paid? No. Nope. Are they getting the best education they could be in this circumstance? The colleges of America certainly aren't doing that, but they're going to do anything they can to cash that check. Syracuse just went back online for the semester, and are they going to issue any refunds for the remaining weeks? Three semesters in a row that they have stopped semesters short of what the full tuition entailed to go online in haphazard ways? Nope. So... This comes back to my college basketball point. Duke, Syracuse, those schools are going to be fine. They're going to make it to March Madness, and there's going to be a champion in college basketball this year, somehow, some way, whether teams drop out, whether it's done in a bubble, or whether it's done in a typical fashion. But will there be a normal college basketball season? Two weeks away, we have yet to get a full schedule there's no uniform testing standards in the sport the NCAA has taken a hands-off approach in letting the different segments of the sport figure this out for themselves our Jeff Goodman here at CLNS Media has had multiple officials in college basketball call it a shit show and that could be applied to so many things right now as is the case in society the big are going to get bailed out in this circumstance in college basketball, and the small are just going to have to figure it out for themselves. And just like in business, some small schools, just of small businesses, have decided to just shut it down and call it quits. Restaurants around Boston, including the Real House in East Boston, where we've had many great meetings here at CLNS Media, have just shut down because there isn't a lot of guidance, there isn't a lot of certainty going forward. And there certainly isn't any relief money from the government. That takes us back to the system that we have in place here. As Joe Biden got elected last week, one of his officials said that a national lockdown of four to six weeks could alleviate so many, much of the pressure that COVID is placing on society right now at so many levels. Four to six weeks. We did that in April. It gave me a ton of hope, personally that we could come together as a country and make sacrifices and get to a better place and then ultimately come out of it feeling better than before. Remember the hope that we were going to have a fun summer? A celebratory summer after defeating the virus? Well, it's November. It's Christmas. Trump out on the campaign trail made all these pitches about Christmas getting canceled, Thanksgiving getting canceled, which is an ass-backwards argument. We're not canceling those out of desire or any unwinning political gain. Those holidays got canceled by the virus, which is all around us, and we can react to it however we want, but the consequences will be the consequences. Instead, there's just been an apprehension toward initiatives that could better this situation. A lockdown isn't even being considered. Biden himself has said he's not going to lock the country down or even push for that. So we're playing to a center of the conversation that's geared more toward what we've done, normalcy, conservatism, whatever you want to call it. And so the results will be the results. What we're essentially heading toward is a 
period of semi lockdown for those who feel like it and normalcy for those who desire that as well. This isn't just a case of Trump supporters, as I've said all along. So many people, whether for their own mental, economic, uh, comfort, or education needs, just want to break out of this, just want to hear the end of it. This podcast isn't going to do very well because people don't want to hear about COVID. But it's all around us. And we're not going to get that locked down. We're not going to get mask wearing, which in itself has also been uh, known to alleviate much of the pressure that's on society right now. Or stimulus, which is badly needed. Don't get me started about the stimulus. Don't get me started about the lockdown. Just like sports shut down, came up with a plan, and had two phenomenal experience experiments in the NBA and the NHL that were huge successes, models for sports. Maybe not the peak financial gain. There was some regression on the NBA's part. They lost a lot of money. The NHL lost more. But they set themselves up for better futures, we think. The NBA is talking about opening stadiums this year with fans, getting them tested. Their heart's in the right place. You know, the NBA is the good league, at least outside of China. Google that one. But they too, because all the society around them is doing it, just want to get back to normal. They want to get back to cashing those checks. And really all segments of society need to move in unison to get us in a better place with this. It's not going to feel good. It's not going to be the most prime economic decisions. It's going to require sacrifice by people who feel like they don't have to sacrifice to get what they want out of this. Let the people who deal with it the most bear the brunt of this virus because we don't feel it. We can do things our way. We can move forward. So it was tough for me to celebrate Joe Biden winning last week because... Even he's grounded in a normalcy conversation here. We could shut this country down for six weeks, pay small businesses to stay closed, and ride this out until the virus is mitigated, the curve is lowered, but we've already gotten one group in this country that wants to fight against any initiatives that can make this better at all. And another just just feels comfortable with what we're doing right now. So that's what we're going to get. Half-hazard sports, a half-assed society and functions, and is that the next two or three years? I'm 22. America's kind of been shut off from the rest of the world. We're not traveling. We're not advancing to the degree that we could be. We know we don't have the resource to get through this emotionally as well as we would like to. I've been fortunate to have a job here at CLNS Media throughout this time, and I thank them very much for that. But my biggest dreams and ambitions out of college are kind of on hold. Now, others have gone through way worse. We acknowledge that, and we all have to acknowledge that some are doing much worse throughout the situation than ourselves. But don't start with me that we can't do what's needed to be done because it feels different, because it feels unrealistic. These things are possible. Just like it would have been possible for college basketball to put together a plan that works, that has bold leadership, that might steer the sport away from what's comfortable, might steer the sport away from amateurism either, and take the power away from these conferences and these big powerful schools that get to rule over the sport. But like with our society, college basketball has been in a downward pace the last couple of years. It has lost its big stars. It's lost its big ambitions. It's lost its allure. But they want to fight to do things the way they've always done them, even in the most unusual circumstances this year. Listen, I want sports. I want to watch college basketball. I want to be at games this year. But if it's not possible... It's not possible. And if the only way we're going to get back to that place in the fastest possible way is through the most discomfort right now for the short term, then we should do it. I'm talking to Mac Gutierrez. I'm talking to 
James Zuba, two old friends from the Syracuse basketball beat. A year ago, we were starting to cover games at this time. Now, there'll be no one at the Dome. There'll be no one at press row for the most part. It'll just be college basketball teams playing in front of chairs to cash some checks and make some people feel good. Maybe I'm a little too pessimistic on this. I'm going to get takes from James, from Matt. As things keep rolling forward here. But keep some of those things in mind. This is Dome Theory 99. Subscribe on iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, all those locations. My YouTube channel, Bobby Manning, is going to have the video version of this. And over at CLNS Media, we'll stream the conversation that I have with James and Matt tonight. Thanks for tuning in. Number 100 of Dome Theory is going to be a documentary. I'll save the topic for next week, but we've been working on that. Number 100 is going to be a sports documentary here on Dome Theory, and then we'll see where it goes from there. Thanks for following along over the years, guys. I hope we can end up in a better place after all of this.